Guys, Dr. Dr. Lynn Bortzer, the Laser Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about uh, PICO lasers in the context of acne scarring. Now, um, I'm sure you know there's a lot and lots of places nowadays advertising for acne scar treatments using the PICO laser. Um, just as a uh, disclosure, I have been involved with Sinusure, as in the manufacturers of PicoShore, approximately five years ago. And based upon the pilot um, study in the US whereby at the end of the day, the conclusion with that is that patients treated with picosecond uh, fractional laser in this situation using the um, focus uh, lens of the Sinusure's uh, PicoShore, they develop the same outcome as, quote, uh, fractional CO2 laser. So that's a really, it's a really, really big statement, yeah, because um, as dermatologists and plastic surgeons, we all know that um, a CO2 laser uh, gives you the most amount of textural improvement, but also the most amount of collagen remodeling, but also has a significant downtime and risk. So to come up with a statement whereby you're using a zero downtime laser, as in Pico Shure, that fires um, uh, fractional wavelengths of, sorry, I should, I should actually be more accurate, it fires uh, fractional amounts of picosecond pulses at the 755 nanometer wavelength uh, into your skin that can cause the same amount of improvement when it comes to overall scars. So when we talk about overall scars, we're talking about atrophic scars, which covers things like uh, uh, box scar scarring with a shallow deep linear, uh, pick scarring, ice pick scarring, rolling scars, and uh, to an extent tethered scars. Because most but not all patients with um, atrophy will usually have a little bit of tethering, uh, especially when it comes to rolling scars. So that paper was, I guess, a landmark paper because um, when I looked at that, I was going, how in the hell can uh, a laser do that in the context of PICO, yeah? Because we all know um, it's really a no downtime laser. Do I like PICO? Sure, absolutely. I still think it's one of the best lasers when it comes to uh, ethnic skin rejuvenation. So when we're actually trying to improve pores, fine lines, pigment excluding melasma uh, in patients who, who are, have got a lot of chrome before, basically a lot of melanin, which is a target for this laser. So interestingly, I did a series myself, yeah, and um, I wanted to confirm or deny that claim because it is pretty big claim to actually improve uh, uh, that kind of scarring. We know histologically from uh, biopsies and uh, excisions of scars, the actual true anatomy of the scars, yeah? So uh, in most situations when you have rolling scars, um, you do have amount of tethering, which is significant. And if you look right down, deep down into the dermis, you see collagen, which instead of being like this, it's all matted up, yeah? And that's the reason why you can have a, a scar which tethers down and the, the textural feel of the skin is, is not right, yeah? Um, and when we look at, uh, I guess, atrophic scars, when we look at the anatomy um, and we do the, sorry, the histology and the anatomy, when we actually look at the slide, you can see big areas where there's collagen loss. So it's intriguing. How can actually a laser, which causes very little, if not no downtime, remodel this? Um, so I did a series of patients and there's only one out of that. I think it was 10 patients, yeah? So nine failures one result uh, and that result was an ethnic patient with mild early scars um, so that was confirmed both as a, uh, a patient so both subjective together with uh, a blinded objective uh, assessment uh, i didn't want to publish that paper because of the fact that um, it served no no use yeah rather than saying that i can't get the results compared to other practitioners so uh, once again it's using the, their parameters in fact my parameters are very much different, yeah. In fact, I was using a, a, a lot more pulses, so somewhere like between three to five thousand shots uh, with a 0 0.71 uh, focus with a six mil lens, so as high as the actual laser would go. But once again, this is all based upon logic, yeah. So uh, we're talking about a laser which actually helps, uh, I guess, remodel some collagen really, really high up in the uh, in the dermis, but causes really good epidermal change, such as uh, laser-induced optical bodies and, and, and things like that, which can release cytokines, growth factors into the dermis, and cause textural improvement where you have better, I guess, smaller pores and less uh, wrinkles, together with improvement in pigment. But logically, with that kind of cascade, um, using uh, picosecond lasers, 
I just can't see it actually going right into the uh, reticular dermis, nor can I see the laser actually snapping or remodeling the bonds, which we know for people with rolling scars or severe scarring, actually forms deep in the subcutaneous layer that transfers this all the way from the fat all the way into the dermis and actually attaches like a tree into the uh, uh, upper uh, dermal layer. So if you look at the, like both the anatomy, gross anatomy, where you touch, you feel, and you look at the histology, um, that way you understand, I guess, uh, how Pico lasers, uh, uh, they have their limits, yeah? Um, and some companies, when they have lasers, yeah, basically what they want to do is sell the laser to the physician or the specialist, and then they market that laser to do a whole heap of things, rather than saying, this laser is really great for this, because it's an ROI, return of investment spreadsheet. The first thing the laser companies do, they give you this spreadsheet, they go, look, for Pico lasers you can do, Pigment pores, uh, pigmentation, uh, you can actually uh, tighten skin, you can treat acne scars, you can treat stretch marks, you can do this and that. Um, uh, it, it's, it's hard to believe, but most laser companies approach uh, physicians in that way. So as physicians, we've got to be more, I guess, uh, selective in regards to the papers we read and I guess, um, to be honest to our patients. Guys, once again, not against Pico lasers. Love them, use them, yeah? But in the context of what we're talking about, something to consider. Guys, thanks for watching this video uh, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.